Hello, hello. How is everybody doing today? I'm here with Rebel. We're excited to get this class going for some pet photography tips. I'm just gonna give it a quick second and let some, uh, let some more people get in here. Hello, hey everybody. How are you all doing today? Happy Thursday to you too. <laughs> hi, Gigi. Hello. Rebel, come say hi. Hi. Yeah, this is Rebel. All right, let me just give it another quick minute here and then we'll get started. Thank you everyone for tuning in already. Uh, this is our pet photography tips. My name is Andrew Willey. I will be the host of today's class. Uh, I'm a professional photographer based down in Los Angeles. Um, I've had the pleasure of working for companies such as Xbox, Google, Mazda, uh, Microsoft, a whole bunch of others. Healthy Spot as well too. Definitely one of my favorites to shoot for. Thank you all for joining. Let's get this going. Also, today's class will be donation-based um, for this month's Roundup partner, LA Love and Leashes. Um, and so you can actually donate at any point during this class. You can donate on their website, which is laloveandleashes.com slash donate. Uh, you can also donate to their uh, Venmo, which is LA Love Leashes. Or anytime you go into a healthy spot store this month, you can actually round up to the nearest dollar as well too. So um, lots of ways that you can donate today. Thank you all in advance for all of your donations. Before I get started, I also wanna say thank you Primal Pet Foods and Healthy Spot for sponsoring today's class. Um, really appreciate it a lot. Uh, let me just get here real quick. If you RSVP'd for today's event uh, via Eventbrite, you'll actually be emailed a special code um, that will be show, or emailing out later tonight. Um, so keep an eye for that one. Uh, you'll be able to um, get a primal edible elixir by stopping by any healthy spot location. So I just wanted to make sure I got that. Um, and today, like I said here, I'm with Rebel. I'm actually treating her with primals. We have chicken, shredded chicken, and we have beef chips. These are both single source protein. Um, really awesome, she loves them. Let's give her another one here for being so good. Here you go, Rebel. <laughs> yeah, she, she's been loving them today. <laughs> so thank you again, Primal, and thank you, Healthy Spot, again. Let's go and keep sliding here. Also, don't forget to share a picture of you and your pup today enjoying the class by tagging Healthy Spot and Primal Pet Foods. Uh, anyone that enters in the next 24 hours will be uh, entered for a chance to win a prize pack of $50 from Primal Pet Foods. So don't forget to do that. All right. And let's see. My slides got all out of order for some reason here. All right. So, all right. And with that, let's get started here. So. Um, I always just like to start with some general tips for better pet photography. Um, step one I always recommend is to clean your lens, um, especially if you're using your cell phone. Uh, if you think about it, that phone is going in and out of your pocket all the time. It's being uh, wiped on by different surfaces, and so it definitely will get dirty, uh, whether that's pocket lint or just like a finger smudge or something like that. So just take a quick second and clean that lens off. Just give it a quick wipe your photos will be 100 times better just from that. Um, tip, number, tip number two here is to take a lot of photos as well. So anytime I'm doing pet photography, you know, I'll come back from an hour session with hundreds of photos and that's gonna give me my top, you know, five, 10 really good photos from that shoot. And it's always easier to go back and delete them versus wishing you had taken more. Um, and that goes along with any type of photography too, is to just, uh, the, the more photos you take, the better. Um, you'll, you'll have more uh, opportunity later to go through them. And then most importantly too, is to just make sure it's fun for both you and your pet. Uh, you don't want it to be, you know, something that you're both getting annoyed about or uh, just a difficult process. You want it to be as fun and as easy as possible for both you and your pet. All right, so let's move on now. So I always love to cover what the best apps are for pet photography. And these are all apps that you can get on your smartphone, could be iOS or Android. They're all free as well too, which is really great. Um, 
The first one that I always like to recommend is Lightroom Mobile. And the reason I recommend that one is because it actually syncs with the desktop version as well too. So you can actually take a photo and start editing it on your, on your phone and then finish it on the computer um, or vice versa as well too. So you can edit on the computer and then finish it on your phone as well too, which is really cool. Um, the next one I recommend is Visco. This is one of my favorite apps. It's uh, filled with really high quality filters and these are filters that were meant for film cameras and it actually started with high quality film filters and they transitioned that into a mobile app. So it's incredibly, if you, it's incredibly powerful if you want to stylize your images. Um, and I, I personally use it to kind of finish up all of my edits as well too. So highly recommend that one as well too. Second, or third is Snapseed. Um, this is just an extremely powerful app. Um, it has just so many tools that you can choose from. Definitely the most amount of tools for any app on this list. Um, it also lets you be able to selectively edit your, uh, edit your image a lot better too. So you can actually just, for example, I could tap on Rebel's face and then just brighten up her face rather than the whole image if I wanted to bring attention to just that part. Um, and so that makes it really easy to do that too, which is awesome. And then finally, uh, the last one that I recommend is Facetune. And some of you may be familiar with this app for, you know, selfies or portraits of people. Um, but it's also actually really great for pet photography too. Um, because I could take a picture of Rebel here and then I could actually draw on her eyes, on her nose, on her mouth to kind of pull out those facial features, which is what we want to do for any sort of, um, portrait or pet photography that we're doing anyways. Um, so those are my top four apps. If you guys, you can comment your favorite app below as well too, if you like. Um, I'd love to hear some of yours as well too, which would be really cool. Uh, so next, let's go through lighting. So with any type of photography, lighting is super, super important, right? Any, no matter how expensive of a camera you have, if there's bad lighting or you're not able to achieve like a good lighting situation, the image just is gonna suffer because of that. Um, so in general, soft indirect lighting is most flattering um, and you can achieve that both inside and outside. And I'll cover those just in, in a second here as well too. Um, but, but it's important to note that pets don't like flash. Um, it can scare them. Um, it's not going to look good as well. It will give them those like those red eyes as well. So just avoid flash overall and instead focus on utilizing that natural light. Um, so in terms of natural light, if we're inside, what we want to do is position ourselves near a window. Um, and I'll cover exactly how you position your pet, but you want to use that soft inside light. Um, and if it's too harsh, you can actually use curtains to kind of like soften it up a bit too. Um, so don't forget about that. If you're outside, say it's like high noon and you have really harsh sunlight coming down, you actually want to, instead of shooting out in the sun, it's better to go uh, in, in shade and find some shade and that's gonna give you a nice soft light as well too. So um, those are my tips for utilizing light the best way possible. All right, let's continue on here. My slides got all out of order for some reason, so bear with me. <laughs> um, next, I wanna cover some camera tips in general. Um, and this can, this can be for any sort of camera. It could be for your phone. If you have you know, a DSLR or whatever it is too, this will relate as well. So I always recommend shooting in pro mode, which is just a fancy way of saying manual. Um, and the reason why I prefer to shoot in manual is it just gives me more control over the whole shooting process. Um, and in particular, the one that I want to recommend most is uh, uh, the most that you pay attention to is increasing your shutter speed. So depending on, you know, your pet's energy level, if they're kind of running around or they're not so sleepy, they're going to be moving really fast and it's going to be hard to get an image that's not blurry the way that you can kind of combat, combat that is to go into that manual mode and then increase your shutter speed. That way you're making sure you get like a nice crisp in, uh, in focus image too, which is obviously really important for photography. Another uh, really good tip that I've used a lot myself 
and it makes it really easy to get an in-focus shot is to actually util utilize your phone's burst mode. Um, so on iPhone, you can actually just hold down that volume button on the side and it will start taking, you know, within a second, you'll have 20, 25 images or so. Um, and then after the fact, you can just go through and, and slide to select which one you like best and it will just delete the rest for you. So that's really useful. If you're on Android, there's a whole bunch of apps that you can download that does that same thing for you too. Um, and then finally, just another little quick tip I have is to utilize both hands when you're taking photos. This is gonna just help stabilize things and then you'll be able to get sharper in focus images that way too. Um, so those are just some quick camera tips as well um, that will help elevate your, photo or your pet photography game. All right, let's go in here. So next I wanna cover is backgrounds. Um, you know, so the subject of the image, your pet, is obviously extremely important. That's kind of the whole reason for the photo itself. But what's also really important is the background of where you're taking that photo, right? So in general, simple backgrounds are, are going to be better just because they really help your pet stand out. Um, you know, and, and, and taking that a step further, you, you also want to pick a complementary color to your pet. And so, you know, what do I mean by complementary color? So, for example, if you have a black cat or a black dog, you're not going to want to take a photo of them on a black couch or on a black rug, right? Because that's just going to make it really hard for them to stand out. They're just going to blend right into it. Same thing goes for like a white dog or white cat on a white couch. Uh, it's much better to kind of flip those colors and pick something that's going to make them really pop and stand out. And, and that way you can focus on them versus, you know, the background or the couch itself. Um, so those are just two quick tips for backgrounds. Simple is always good. And then making sure just the color of the background will help them stand out too is really important. Let's see here. Camera tips. We went through that one. All right. So the location that you're taking the photo is also going to be really important too. Um, and we have two main, two main areas we can take photos, right? It's indoor or outdoor, and that will strongly depend on your pet and your house or your apartment. Um, a lot of different factors, but in general, it's, it's good to know you can get great photos no matter where you are. Um, you just want to be able to utilize that location to the best of its ability, right? So if you're inside, what I talked about before was making sure you have that soft indirect light and in order to achieve that we want to head over towards a window and then position our pet with either the window light hitting the front of them or the window light hitting the side of them too. <laughs> Rebel just decided to, to jump off. Um, so you can position them either right in front of the window or to a 45 degree angle of the window. You want to just really avoid a, like having the having your pet right in front of the window and having that backlight light come through. And the reason for that is it's going to be really hard for your camera to get everything in focus. You'd rather have that light hitting the front of them than coming up from behind them. Um, otherwise, you're going to either have a blown out window or just a really dark pet, um, which neither of those is ideal either. Uh, now, if we go outside, the biggest thing is to just really make sure your pet feels comfortable and isn't too distracted as well, too. So a lot of times when I take my... <laughs> Rebel, come here. Oh. <laughs> She's going to shake the table otherwise. Okay, let's, give, let's give her one more of these little guys real quick here. There you go, Rebel. Good girl. <laughs> um, so... For me, like when I would take my dog outside, it would be, she would just be way too distracted with everything else going on. And so you just want to make sure they're in, they're feeling comfortable and there's not a lot of distractions or they're not going to be able to focus on you and the, the, the photo taking process. Um, and I'll actually cover a few different things that you can do to make sure that they are focused on you as well too. Um, but minimizing distractions is always good. And Anything you can do in general to make your dog feel as comfortable as possible, that's going to be really important as well, too. And, and I'll go through the reason why that um, is so important in, in a second here, too. All right. So with any type of photography, um, you know, portraits for people, for pets, 
anything that involves any sort of subject, it's, it's really all about the eyes, right? Eyes are kind of like what our connection to the viewer, uh, that's how we see that connection. So you wanna really make sure that the focus is on the eyes and that they're nice and sharp too. So um, with our phones, if we're taking a shot of our pet, rather than focusing on their nose, it's, it's much better to actually tap their eye and get the focus on their eye instead. Um, that's gonna give us just a much better end result. <laughs> right, Rebel? That'll give us a much better result. They're gonna, we're gonna see most expression that way. And like I said, it's gonna connect us, or it's gonna connect them to the viewer when the viewer is viewing that photo too. So that part is really important as well. All right. Again, don't forget to share a picture of you and your pup or cat or just any pet. Uh, enjoying this class, tag Healthy Spot and Primal Foods for a chance to win that prize pack uh, from Prim Primal valued at over $50. And just make sure that you do that in the next 24 hours as well. All right, my next tip, and this might be my all time, you know, if I could have you walk away with one thing from this, I think it would be this tip here. And that is to get down low um, get down to your pet's level, you know, rather than standing up above them and capturing them from up above, get down eye level with your pet. And this is going to just instantly make your, your photos much, much better quality, both in terms of like the quality, and then you're going to be able to capture so much more personality and their natural expressions too. Um, and then with phones too, the closer that you are to the actual subject, um, which is your pet, just the, the higher quality the image is going to be. So like I said, if there's one tip I would take away from this is just to kind of get down to your um, to eye level with your pet and shoot kind of at them, you know, eye level versus down on them too. So um, that that right there is, is definitely one of my, my biggest tips. Okay, let's see here. All right, so another tip too is to just be patient. Um, you know, you, you don't want to force anything. Um, some of my best all-time photos with pets have been just kind of getting down to their level and then waiting. So, uh, for example, that could just mean sitting down on the ground with your camera um, and kind of waiting. You know, your pet might come running up to you really excited that you're down at their level um, and let them kind of do that and, and kind of do their thing. But if you just kind of get down and wait, eventually they'll start to kind of do their own thing again. And that's when you can capture them kind of, you know, in their own element, um, do, just like living their life and getting natural expressions and, and everything like that too. So that's kind of been my, my experience with it. Um, but again, it's, it's, you don't want to force anything. You definitely want to be patient with them if they're not you know, if they're not responding as well as you would hope that they would, that's okay. You can call it and, and you know, try again the next day as well too. So um, like it goes back to kind of the first slide we talked about, which is you want to make it fun uh, for both you and your pet too. So that that's definitely really important. Okay. This kind of also relates as well too. I know a lot of you were asking about different poses in some of the um, the slides that we had put up before the uh, this presentation, um, you know, how do you pose pets or different things like that. The number one rule with this is you don't want to again don't force anything. You want your pet to feel comfortable and look as natural as possible. If if you're forcing them into a position or somewhere where they don't want to be, uh, if they don't want to be sitting on the ground next to you know, whatever it is, it's going to show in the images and their personality is not going to be able to, to come through in the image. So again, it just comes down to making them feel as comfortable as possible. Don't force anything. If you do want to get them starting to get more comfortable with, you know, posing and sitting and things like that, it's always good to just use lots of treats um, like this. Uh, and you don't even need to take photos at first. You know, you can also just start the process of having them sit and stay and then even you crouching down while they're doing that and telling them to stay. Um, I've noticed that is actually a really big step for them too. So kind of just practice and work your way up. Again, don't force anything and be patient with that as well too. All right, let's go with this one. 
Um, speaking of treats here, <laughs> um, don't be afraid to, to you know, utilize treats, toys, and sounds to get the attention of your dog. Um, you know, it, it could be one dog, it could be multiple dogs if you're trying to pose them together as well. Um, but in general, kind of, you know what your dog likes best. Uh, if there's a certain sound where they always will look at you or, um, you know, sometimes they'll twist their head or something like that. You know, you know your dog best or your, your pet best. Um, and so it's, it's, it's definitely okay to utilize those things. Um, when I'm taking dog photography, um, I'm always, I always have like a squeaky toy with me. Um, it's always good to have treats with you as well too. Not only to get their attention, but also to reward them. Um, you don't want to just be down there shooting the whole time and having them, you know, kind of sitting there and not getting anything out of it, right? So it's good every now and then to give them a treat and reward them for being good too. And that's just going to help them uh, realize that, you know, they're doing something right too. And uh, it, it'll, it'll make it more fun for them as well too. Right, Rebel? <laughs> um, and again... Yeah, toys and different sounds can definitely be used to ensure that they're focusing on you and your lens. Um, there are even different uh, different products that you can buy that go on top of your phone. Um, there are some cases where it has like a, a little like dangly thing or like a dog toy, actually, so that they're kind of always looking at that lens too, um, which can help for dogs that don't want to really look at the lens as much as well. Um, okay, let's see here. Did that, sorry, I'm just making sure since the slides got out of order, I wanna make sure I got everything here. We did that. Um, I'm thinking that, yeah, I think that that is it actually. Um, so let's see, we're on the Q&A section now. If anybody has any questions, you can actually, there's a question box, not just a comment, but there's a question box um, that you can type those in. And I have a few minutes here to be able to answer any questions that anybody has as well too. Um, we did have a question that was submitted beforehand, um, and that was how do, you, how do you get multiple dogs to pay attention to you when you're shooting. Um, and that kind of goes back to that same tip I said about utilizing those treats, toys, and sounds, right? So um, if you have two, three dogs, whatever it is, make sure you have one person taking the photo. Um, and if the other owners are kind of like around, try to put the owners all behind the lens too. A lot of times each pet will wanna focus on their owner and so if you have, you know, rather than spreading everybody out, if you have everyone in a single line, they're gonna be looking all together at that lens as well. And, and that one person can be, you know, squeaking the toy or holding up the treat or, or whatever that is as well. So um, I've noticed that that actually is a really, really good way to kind of get all the attention focused on the lens. Um, and, that, and that's a great, a great question too. It's, it's a really hard thing to do. Um, as we know, like even just getting a shot of a single pet can be tough and then when you uh, put multiple pets in there it definitely there's just a lot more variables so if you can kind of take as, away as many variables as possible it will make it a lot easier to get that that, that really good shot um, all right so what is the best way to take pictures with multiple pets oh so that was that was exactly kind of, kind of what I just answered um, another tip I have actually is Whenever you're taking group photos, um, and this could be people, multiple pets, whatever it is, um, you want to put everyone on the same kind of like horizon. So it's best if rather than stacking people with like a different depth behind them, if you can put them in a row, as long as it's not too many of them, it's actually going to make the camera much easier to have focus beyond both of them. Um, just be, the way that cameras work, and especially phones, um, you can't have something focused for, for here, for example, and then back as well. So if you have a, a dog up front and then a dog in the back, uh, it's the camera can only focus on one of them. So rather than this, you know, put them side by side 
uh, and that's going to help get you a much sharper image. And then, like I said, kind of minimize own, like put owners all behind the lens, and then have the one person with the lens uh, squeaking the toy or you know ha holding out the treat or whatever that is. Um, so that's a great question as well. We have another question. Oh, there we go. Sorry, I, I didn't realize I could actually put it up there. Um, another question here, is a manual camera better to use than a phone? Um, and that, that is a really great question. Um, I've always said the best camera is the camera that you have with you. So your phone in many times is going to be that, you know, that camera that you have with you. And especially today's phones, they are incredibly good and incredibly powerful. Um, you know, and sorry, I just got, uh, I see someone wants to join the live here. Um, that said, having like a DSLR or like a full manual separate camera is going to give you a higher quality photo. Um, just because there's just, there's more raw data for you to kind of mess around with. You can get different lenses, like a faster portrait lens. Um, you, I mean, there's so much you can do with that. That said, if you have a, a, a phone and that's all that you have, you can still get incredible photos with that too. Um, and with these apps that I kind of walked through, you can actually turn it into manual mode. So you can shoot in raw, you can change the white balance, you can change the shutter speed. Um, there's so much that you can do that way um, to help get really good photos too. So it's, yeah, it's tough. Um, there, otherwise, if you wanted to, you could get like an entry level uh, lens or, or an entry level camera, um, but that's like a whole, a whole separate conversation too. Um, let's see, I'm getting some questions in here. If you could type them actually in the question box, it'll be easier for me so I don't have to scroll. Um, is there an easy way to smudge something out you don't want on an iPhone? Um, yeah, so in Facetune, you can kind of smudge things to, to remove them. Uh, there's also Photoshop for the phone that you can click and remove things. Uh, that tool is also available in that Lightroom mobile app as well. Um, so those are all really good ways to do that. Any recommendations for studio type lighting? Um, so right now I actually just have a ring light up above me. Um, and a lot of times that's all you need in terms of like a studio light. You can get these cheap kind of three light setups on Amazon for like 60 bucks where it's like three different lights with umbrellas. And then you would do, you know, one main light, one on the side, and then one behind them as well too. Um, so there's a lot that you can do that way. So I'm kind of like rapid fire answering these questions just because we only have about a minute here. Um, what about using a flash because pets can be scared of flash? Yeah, so I don't know if you, you might not have joined when I was going through different lighting techniques, um, but I did say, yeah, avoid flash because it can definitely scare pets. Um, and, and it will give them that red eye look. Uh, in general, it's, it's not going to be the most attractive look for them. Rather than flash, you can, you know, it's, you can use like a, a ring light like this, um, but it's best to just utilize the natural light. So go towards a window and get that natural window light, or you can go outside in the shade um, and get some natural light that way too. Good question. Very good question. Uh, what are your favorite filters to use? Um, that's a good question. I'm trying to remember the name of them. The the A series on so this is in Visco. The A A series are really great. Um, the S series as well too. Um, I pay for their subscription, so I have access to like all however many hundreds of them. Um, and you can actually just tap and hold and start favoriting them once you start to um, utilize those more and more. All right. Oh, we got a bunch more questions. Um, <laughs> Let's see here. I'll answer just a couple more and then I think we're at time, but I want to make sure we get these. So, oh, flash or no flash? Yeah, so no flash. Um, what are some of the most useful tricks for dogs to know for photos? Um, that's a really great question. And honestly, it's really just about them, you know, trusting you and feeling comfortable with you um, to be able to, you know, you can tell them to stay where they are and then you can move around and get the composition that you want. Um, that's really what it comes down to. It's not so much about the trick, more so about them feeling comfortable and you being able to get natural photos of them 
kind of, you know, in their natural environment. Um, good question. How do you prefer to edit your photos? So those four apps and, and this presentation will actually be uploaded to IGTV right afterwards for anyone that wants to check it out again. Um, but I use Lightroom and Photoshop and Visco to edit pretty much all of my photos. Um, that's a good question. Tips for photos of darker black dogs. Great question. I've had a lot of people ask me that actually. Um, part of it is the background. So avoid darker backgrounds, pick lighter backgrounds that will help them stand out more. Um, and then when you're editing, a lot of it has to do with like pulling up those shadows more. That's going to give them a lot more detail in their face, which is what you want to do. So light background and then pull up the shadows. That's a great way to do it for, for dark, uh, for darker pets. Um, Sorry, I realized I wasn't uh, putting up here. Um, this is another good one. Tips for a very, very, very young pup. Um, it's gonna be really tough uh, for them to maintain focus on the lens. Um, and that's just gonna come with time. You can train them to be kind of the look at me type thing and they'll keep, keep their attention on your eyes. And then when you release them, you can give them a treat. That is always good to do. Instead of also, instead of trying to have them look at the camera always, you can kind of, you know, get them tired a bit. And then, like I said, get down to their level and just wait and be patient and then let them do their thing. And then that's when you can get photos of them kind of, you know, whether they get tired and they sit down and they're looking off in the distance or, or whatever it is, uh, you can get more artsy photos that way versus them just looking right at the camera too. Uh, this is another great question. Tips for energetic dogs that can't stay focused for a long time. Go out for that two mile run before you want to take the photos, you know, or have that play date or go to the dog park. Whatever it is that you need to do to get their energy out before you take photos, that is going to be really important as well too. Um, I've had that same issue sometimes as well. Like if my dog just has way too much energy, it's, it's really difficult to get them to sit still. So you got to get that energy out beforehand and they'll be much, much uh, better at kind of sitting still. Uh, best times to shoot outside. Um, you can shoot outside at any time, uh, golden hour, like sunrise, sunset, those are always going to be the best times just because the light is the softest. Um, it goes back to what I talked about before. It's just getting that soft light to, uh, to give you the most natural look. Uh, <laughs> awesome, Andrew. Thanks, Kane. Um, if you're shooting like midday and the sun is really harsh, just find a little bit of shade and that will do, you know, that's going to be much better for you as well too. Um, actually, let me, I forgot. Let's see. Okay, no, we covered all that as well, too. Um, so you can shoot outside at any time of the day as well, too. We had that a couple of times. I think, awesome, yeah, I think that that is it. Let me just pull this one up again. Again, uh, just don't forget to share that picture of you and your pup enjoying today's class for that chance to be entered to win that $50 prize pack from Primal. Uh, I want to say thank you again. Uh, thank you again to Primal and Healthy Spot for sponsoring today's class. Um, and then today's class, again, like I said, was sponsored by LA Love and Leashes. So uh, don't forget to donate to them as well. They would definitely love your support. Um, and with that, I think we are done. So just wanted to say thank you to all of you. I'm trying to clear this off. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you to all of you for joining. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Um, can't wait to see all of the good photos that you get with your pups. All right, Rebel. That's it. Say bye. <laughs> all right. Hope everyone has a good day. Bye.